Today, I'm making a mead that's gonna age for 25 years. Let's get started. So in today's video, I am making a wedding mead. Now, um, I've already got married, and I actually just got married as of recently. I don't know when this video is coming out, but my goal is to make a mead that I can put back and have a bottle of for the next 25 years. So that means that this mead I'm gonna be making today should hopefully age for 25 years. And I have a couple things um, that I'm using in order to do this. This is a big experiment. I don't know if it'll work at all, but we're gonna find out. So the first thing is I needed a big fermenter because in order to get at least 25 bottles out of this, I have to do six gallons. Now I'm making a mellow mel, which means I'm using fruit and that adds sediment. So basically I'm almost doubling my volume in hopes that at the end of it all, I'll have at least 24 bottles worth. So I'm using something very large, this. This right here is a 30 gallon fermenter. Now this thing right here is going to help us ferment through the, the primary and secondary. And I've already done all the sanitizing, all the stuff. Um, we're gonna start with this, the recipe you see right here. Um, this is a pear and an apple mead. Um, it's pear because my wife's favorite fruit is pear and my favorite fruit's apple. So I thought that that'd be a good combination. We are also, well, I should say how much we're using. We're using 15 pounds of pears that have been sliced up and 15 pounds of apples sliced up, three gallons of organic apple juice, um, three gallons, that's not in here right now, of pear juice, and then three gallons of water. The water is there to bring the, um, well, to add some volume, but also to bring the starting gravity or the gravity down of the juices so that my honey I add will work. Um, the honeys I'll be using are uh, a grand total of 30 pounds of honey. I'm using 12 pounds of blueberry blossom honey, 12 pounds of avocado blossom honey, and six pounds of Tupelo honey. Um, I, I might have to adjust this depending on how high the ABV is. With this being something that's gonna age for 25 years, it's gonna have to be high ABV. Otherwise it won't age, it'll kinda go bad. Um, my yeast I'll be using is the Lauvin QA23. So, uh, what I first need to do is, well, actually, let me back up. Let me say this. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my juices and my water in the primary. I am adding five pounds of my pears right now and five pounds of the, the apples right now to achieve two things, a little more apple and pear flavor, but also to use the skins to help provide some more tannic value. That leaves 20 pounds of these fruit left to be used in the secondary. And again, this giant fermenter is gonna give us plenty of space. So I've already sanitized everything, I'm trying to make sure I do that really well. I don't want this to go bad. This is a very expensive mead, I might add. So it would be a very large shame if it went bad. Um, I am first going to go ahead and start mixing up my honey and my water and my juice. All right, so we have mixed everything together. The water, honey, all the juices. Our starting gravity is 1.130. So that's like a 17% mead, just as is, even before the apples and the pears. We are now going to add in our 15 grams of Lauvin QA23, and we'll go ahead and do our five pounds of apples and our five pounds of pears. Also, I didn't mention, I'm gonna follow the Tosna 3.0 protocol for this one, so I'm gonna feed my yeast in this way. I'll show it on the screen right now. This is how many grams of all of my Fermaid O that I will be using, and I'll use the schedule that it says. Essentially, we're just gonna try and give this the best possible chance at fermenting. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put our airlock back on, or our lid, which is a very large lid, right here, and put our airlock on, which is a very large airlock, and I'll come back with some updates on this. It should hopefully start fermenting sooner than later. We'll find out though. 
All right, so this has been fermenting for like 14 days-ish, and every single day I come in and I've been step feeding it nutrients. I've also been kind of stirring this up, so it's degassing. It's also just keeping the apples submerged. We're currently at 1.090. So I am planning when this hits roughly uh, about 1040, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my fruit on top of this. And it's really gonna add more fruit flavor. Also, there will be alcohol content. So I'll still have to do this, but it will protect the fruit from being um, hurt by any possible bad bacteria. At day 28, I went ahead and put more apples in. The current gravity was 1.040. At day 50, I decided to go ahead and rack off of those apples into some new containers, and I put them into two five-gallon carboys. Both are not very clear here, so I went ahead and decided I wanted to cold crash, which means that you take and put your container into a cold chamber for sediment to fall out of suspension. After cold crashing, it looks something like this, which was decently help or clear. You can see the sediment at the bottom there. Now this next part is not for the faint of heart. Tragedy struck. When I say tragedy, I don't mean just a light, momentary affliction. As I was moving the mead over into a new container, weeks later, to wreck it, this happened. there are enough words to describe what I was feeling, the anger, frustration at myself. As you can see here, I put it on a bucket that was right side up, thinking that it'd be stable. In my brain and heart, I think I knew, it probably was not smart, and it toppled over, because gravity is real. So, we lost five gallons of mead. Thankfully, I had three gallons left so we can continue the project. But this fateful, tragic thing hurt. So I guess in my frustration or sorrow for losing the mead, I didn't record many clips after. So here's what I did. I went ahead and um, oaked the mead with an oak spiral, the three gallons I had left at least. I threw an oak spiral in for roughly about a month and a half. Racked off of that, it got the oak flavor that I wanted. I went ahead and back sweetened with two pounds of blueberry honey. And with ha this having stopped at 1.010, I was pretty confident that the yeast were done. And um, so I, I did not stabilize here. I just left it as is. I did let it set for like two months after back sweetening. So it sat, I saw no re-fermentation, so I'm very confident that it is done. And we are now going to bottle it. So here I am bottling the brew. Um, I put it into an assortment of bottles. Originally I wanted to use all 750 milliliter wine bottles, but that plan was foiled. So I went ahead and bottled into what bottles I had that are corked, I will add, and I went ahead and corked them. I did half synthetic and half natural cork. Now I kind of teetered on which to do and asked you guys and um, I got a 50-50 split. So that's what I did. I then decided, hey, I actually want to also take and put some wax on top. So I melted these wax beads you can buy at your homebrew store and just dipped the bottles in. So these are sealed very, very well. All right, so all of that led to this, to where we are right now. Unfortunately, I don't have as many wine bottles in front of me as I wish I had. I intentionally, with the, I mean, it came out to be probably would have been seven or eight gallons of mead. I would have had 32 wine, full 750 mil wine bottles. But because of my tragic thing, idiot moment, I'm down to this. So you see two things here. I've got two sides. These right here are the synthetic cork. Now this, this brew is not the most um, clear, and I, 
I, am I going to regret that in 25 years? Probably. I don't really know. But this is the synthetic cork. This is the natural cork. So natural cork has the black wax. The maroon wax is on the synthetic. The wax is there to help, especially with the, the natural cork, to let oxygen stay out. Um, it's not going to breathe any. So I don't know if these are going to age well uh, over 25 years. Normally mead has like a shelf life and it kind of goes through a bell curve of like, hey, it's good here and kind of goes down. But with this being 1.050, uh, of the final gravity, I think it'll age a little better. I do have just a little bit here, so let me go ahead and tell you what I'm tasting. It's very sweet, but the acid balance you get from the fruits is complementing the sweetness. And then the little bit of oaking that I did also kind of gives a little uh, vanilla slash obviously oak flavor to it. It is very, very good. And I do believe with time, the ABV will come down. We're setting you know, like 16% ABV. Um, so not exactly a small amount, but I am very, uh, I'm very bummed out by what I've lost, but I think it's pretty good. This video is not done though. We are um, six months into this process. I made this roughly about six months ago. Yeah, roughly then. We're going to wait another six months and I'm going to drink. We're going to open up a bottle of this with my wife um, at, for our year anniversary. So we'll jump to that. My last little note. I don't know which is going to age better, natural versus, versus synthetic, which is why I did both. So this is a long term test to see which one ages best. These are going to go away. Obviously, natural cork needs to be stored on its side and it will. So. All right, let's go to the final tasting of this. All right, here we are for the nine month, one year tasting of this. I started it nine months ago, but this is our anniversary. I have my wife here with me behind the camera. She doesn't want to be on camera. Um, so I am going to open up. I've decided I'm going to open up a natural cork one, which is this one right here. The synthetics, uh, I don't know if it's true or not. I think will actually age better. We'll find out. So this has been aged on its side. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. Here we go. What do you get on the nose? Pear. Okay. You get any apple? It should be apple and pear. I get more pear than apple, but. Mm hmm I get a little wood, definitely mm -hmm. some barrel. Did you oak it? Uh-huh, it was oaked. I mean, it smells pretty, it definitely smells like it's gonna be a little hot though. It is, it's hot. Like heat. Like uh, um, ABV, oh. like it's got. I mean, sixteen percent. It's supposed you put to age. A jalapeno. In this no, 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 no. <laughs> no, like hot uh, often means like the burn, like mm -hmm. at, like a whiskey burn. People say like that's hot. Like, mm -hmm. So that's what. So it might have a little bit of that. <laughs> Did you catch the name on it? Did I tell you about that name mm -hmm. on it? It's twenty five to life. That's just the, the joke. Oh, okay. I didn't realize I <laughs> <laughs> shackled you into this <laughs> marriage. <laughs> well, let's try it. Okay. Oh, it's thick. It's very young. Uh... It is thick. So the legs are like, you know, like cling to the glass. It's much more uh, viscous. It's good though. Mm hmm. It's not as like, I was worried about it being, like I said, hot, having a lot of it's um, not hot. alcohol burn. I don't really get much. No, I don't think so. It has a little bit at the end, but yeah, and the the wood is way more like on the nose, like it's definitely mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I don't taste it as much though. Mm -hmm. It's very like fruit forward is what I get, but definitely has a little. I mean, a smidge of that heat. I wonder how that will that balance out over flavor. time. Yeah, that will go away. No, not go away, but it will mellow. Mm -hmm. And uh, assumedly, like the apple and the pear will start to mellow out too. Yeah, I get a. I don't. I get more pear than apple still, even mm. on the flavor. Do you get more apple? Yeah, no, I get, yeah, I definitely get more pear, um, which I don't remember from my ratios, but I think I might have, I thought I stacked them pretty evenly. Pear may just be more. Yeah, which is fine. I like pear. Maybe the apple, we'll, we'll, we'll be curious to see how they change over time. Yeah, I like pear. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying like over like time, this. like how this one will actually 
I mean, it will end up being. I think it's really good. I do too. It's pretty heavy. Like it's mm -hmm. like. But I kind of had to make it that way because light ABV and not sweet. Like this is this is sweet, sweet. Mm -hmm. and it kind of has to be to age for a long time. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it won't age very well. What is the ABV? Sixteen percent. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't drink the rest of this bottle is what you're telling me. I mean, me. you could. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they make uh, like Polish meads are like a big style and they normally go above 18%. Mm -hmm. Like BC is making one for his kid mm. and it has to age for like 20 years. Like to get to, to get to the point where it's not, I'm not going to say that they can't be good before then, but most people will age them 10 plus years at least because, because they need that much time to mellow out mm -hmm, because they're so high ABV. They're normally really high sugar. Um, they just need a lot of time. This is this is kind of in that Polish uh, vein, at least. Yeah, it's like a um, like I almost want something really bitter, like bitter chocolate or something mm -hmm. to go with it. It's like a very. I do like so one thing I do like is the the sweetness is there, which is nice, but it's not so sweet that it is like hurting. You no. know what I mean? Like, because there is like the oak, which is gives some of that tannin mm -hmm. feeling. And then there's the, um, it has some acidity. Like you're talking about bitterness, has a little bit of acidity there that kind of distracts. Well, that's what I'm saying. I like want something bitter to like counter it almost yeah. or bring it out maybe. Uh huh. I think it's, I'll be very curious to see in a year. That's when I is. get this again is in a year. Yeah. You only get it once a year. <laughs> Why would you have told me that before I started drinking? Yeah. I'll finish my glass. Yeah, it's an anniversary. Well, oh. there's still half a bottle here. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it's I only, thought that we were just going to drink this We've got enough for 25 year. years. Oh. Unless we see them start to go down. One year, it just turns out really bad. We notice that they're falling apart, then we might uh, <laughs> clear through the cool. stock faster. Um, was this the one that fell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a fantastic point in this video. I'll have to show you. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. It was it was tragic. I'm hoping that if you saw that, uh, people watching, you your heartstrings were pulled because it was <laughs> very tragic. But then you still have enough for 25 years, even after. Well, I originally wanted to do full wine bottles, oh. so I had a couple of these. Mm -hmm. These are 500 milliliter. And then this is a 375. This is half a wine bottle. This is a little bit in between. So I had enough to get by with the, this size. Originally, it was supposed to be full wine bottles. So what so you're telling where, me is I only get this once a year and I only get like you only get a, half of a half of a wine bottle? <laughs> yeah, basically. It was tragic. It is kind of tragic. It's good. It's good. I, I am very pleased with it. I don't know what I would change. Um, I feel like long term is where I'll, I'll decide if there's anything to change. At its current point, nine months it is, I mean, it's pretty smooth. It's, it is. It's just very it is very heavy. Yes, it is very heavy, but I think it has to be that way. I think that's the only way that this would have. But do you think it'll get less heavy? Mm -mm. Or do you think it'll, it'll stay, stay heavy and just. It'll stay heavy, but age better. Okay. It's like a, like port wines, yeah. you know, can sometimes mm -hmm. age longer because they are heavy. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really have a light port wine. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the reason you can open one like 50 years later. And mm -hmm. It's still pretty good. I mean, not to say that other things can't age well, but. What are you going to do if it ages well and then we get to 25 years and then? Well, I'll probably have some better meads by then. I think I can outpace <laughs> this one pretty easily well, with knowing what I know now. Special. It is special, but I'm saying like, as far as creating more, like I think by the 25 year mark, I, I will be able to create stuff like this, the quality at least on a more consistent basis. What about when we hit the 10 year mark? Are you going to make a 10 year? I should. Or the, even the one year. Do you want to make one now? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need more bottles. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. We well, do something different. I can put this. that on the on the list. I got a I got a list, and I'll that'll bump, be bumped up to first. <laughs> oh, amazing! <laughs> I get to pull pull rank for a minute. <laughs> so I hope you guys um, have enjoyed this. This is pretty good. I think it's going to age really well, and uh, I will probably we might do a two year tasting. It could be fun to make this as long as the channel is still running, it could be fun to come back. So you won't see this another video on this for a year, but hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and you know, be sure to do all the things that support the channel, but thank you for, thank you to my wife for being part of the tasting and inspiring this mead <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, happy to do it. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll see you again in the future. Cheers. Cheers everybody.